Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Crow's Nest Official, my wife and I's new channel, my wife, Kristen Appleton. And the camera just switched right to you. It was perfect. Oh. Um, so basically today what we're going to be doing is we're going to go over our top 10 favorite TV series. Okay. Because we've, we've been working on trying to do different <laughs> content and we're like, okay, we need some funny, easy stuff to kind of get our chops down a little bit, you know? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go over our favorite TV series. Um, and I guess we're going to, I guess we'll start with the first on the list. Cause we've got, we, this is a very interesting list. Um, for those that don't know us very well yet, uh, very very big contrast here. So the first on the list is is Game of Thrones. It's my personal favorite. Mm -hmm. Each of us picked five for the top ten list, so it was challenging. Um, what, what what can you really say about Game of Thrones that anybody doesn't already know? Um, I know it's different from the books. I know that there are people still alive in the books that are dead in the show. I know all of this stuff. I didn't read the books because I can't sit down and read fiction. So for me, Game of Thrones is like, you know, I've watched the whole thing now three times, uh, maybe four. I don't remember. I typically watch the entire thing like once a year or so. And uh, it's it's my favorite series, hands down. I mean, I, it's probably my favorite series of all time. Uh, I can't think of anything that I've watched more than Game of Thrones so religiously and gotten so wrapped up into it that I actually bought all the books and hardback special edition that I haven't even cracked open yet. Um, I bought graphic novels. I've went searching for the other stuff, like the, well, the graphic novels, it, basically anything, anything. I just, I love it. And one of these days when I have absolutely nothing else to do, I am going to sit through. I'm going to read all the books. I almost got you a Game of Thrones um, display. Yes. Uh, that would have been cool. You can never go wrong with anything Game of Thrones. We bought the living card game that I don't think we ever played. That was years ago. That was mm. back on like Patriot. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, what else? Like there, there's so much. Like I just love Game of Thrones, period. Like, And we watched it together and we watched it pretty we watched religiously. It. I really liked it. I, I liked it a lot. I was mm. very interested to see what happened. I just didn't like fall in love with it. Okay, I, I think she's upset I fell because in love she's with the dragons. Foot. Yeah, see, you love the dragons. I you love the dragons. dragons for the studio here. You got dragons up on the wall. I know, I do love dragons. I wish they were real. Well, you know what? There are lots of dragons in <clears> Game <throat> of Thrones. Um, I find it interesting. Like it was one of the most expensive series to date at the time. I don't know if anything has cost more to make. Um, I did think that I forget what season it was. Um where everything was so dark we could barely see what was going on that was bad it was like the big battle scene where all the undead I, yeah to, i do yeah. remember that oh we were on we that we were on patriot way probably because i remember being on the couch facing the tv and i remember us talking about it's so dark we can barely see anything you couldn't see anything you yeah. saw a few eyes and and i remember at the time i was listening to howard stern before he went like berserk crazy and um he was taught, he was complaining about how like it was so terrible. I'm like, everything was really good. It was just the way they lit everything was, it was terrible. weird. It was like they had a power outage that day and decided to move forward because all the money was spent. I yeah. don't know. So anyway, Game of Thrones is first on the list here because that's my favorite show. And like, hands down, it's better than everything else on this list. I'm kidding. My wife might, might disagree. Mm, it's just that my, see, I forget. I, say out of sight, out of mind. There may have been something I was super into. Like I like super, um, oh, what's uh, supernatural shows. Anything that has to do with, I don't know, like witches. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? I'm just listening. Vampires, ghosts. I love vampires. I don't know. Anything supernatural I think is fun, but. If there was a real vampire that came to our door and said, you got one chance, I said, let's go. Be ready. <laughs> the problem is, is I haven't watched TV or a show in such a long time that I can't remember. But it's the ones in your gut that la that last no matter what. Like when I said, what's your top five favorite shows? You went boom, 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 boom. Those are your top five favorite. Right. There might be others that are really good, but those are the ones that stick out to you as like, so, I can watch that over and over. Right. That's true. And I do like these. The only time I watch anything is before bed. So I have about 10 minutes. 
<laughs> Even if she's like, Before I'm I fall so asleep. awake, I'm never going to fall asleep. <laughs> she's out. Like instantly, she's out. So I like to watch things that are, what I, I don't know, light, funny. I love things that are funny. But I love Watch What Happens Live. I think Andy Cohen is hilarious. I think he's so, what's the word? Well balanced in his thought process, his comedic relief. A power top and a power player. Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually like Andy Cohen a lot too. So I think he's cool. If I were ever gay, I'd probably stalk him. Yeah. And I like, <laughs> I just love the way he interviews and interacts with his guests and just his franchises. I don't know. I think it's always typically very funny. He, I, he seems very much like not about just towing the party line, so to speak. Like he has a mind of his own and he's willing yeah. to express that. And yeah. I really, really respect that in any form of Hollywood or entertainment. Yeah. yeah. No, I would say I don't consider him to have super tunnel vision. He's very much, you know, realistic. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It It's he has. I like his silly games. I love with the ski shot shot ski. Well, there's so many games on there that are pretty ridiculous, but the Q &A I get a games. I get a kick out of them. So, yeah. well, I mean, I watched that with you for a little while. I mean, it was entertaining, yeah, especially late at night if you're drinking, which you know, sure, we never were, but I could see how that'd be a fun show to watch with his drinking games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I think Watch What Happens Live is a cool show, not something that I, you know, I would watch religiously, but. Mm. Um, so number three on this list is another one of mine, Altered Carbon on Netflix. This show is, it's funny because this show came out, when did this come out? 2018. Okay. So this show came out in 2018 and it's ultimately a sci-fi series about they, so in the future, or this time period, human bodies are called sleeves. OK, because they're interchangeable ultimately. And if you have enough money, you can get these discs like people in the military and people that people who have experience and knowledge and training and different things. Everybody has a sleeve in their neck or a, a, a disc in their neck. And that disc contains all their memories, their thought, like everything about them, like everything that makes them them. And if they die, then they have an, an opportunity to basically put that disc in another sleeve, another body. And, and it's, it's insane. Honestly, it's insane. And now with technologies like the Neuralink and all of the claims that they've made and artificial intelligence and just all of the things that are happening now and it happening so quickly, it's already starting to make altered carbon look prophetic. But don't you think that if it, you're able to imagine it, it's, a possibility absolutely right yeah. and so i think that's what happens a lot of times look at star trek because i think that what's difficult for us to create technology for are things that are outside the realm of our imagination mm -hmm. things that our brains can't possibly conceive on their own but i think if you have an imagination and you're like this is possible especially in the state of where you are then it's easier to I suppose that, it's easier to come up with i don't know an idea that's actually also being you know, what's the word I'm looking for? It's easier to be led into like what you can imagine or come up with <clears> mentally <throat> if there's already a little seed somewhere in the world that yeah. makes it make sense. Yeah. I totally get that. And I I just I always wonder sometimes what access to certain information Hollywood has that the rest of us don't. You know, like even even if you look at like The Simpsons, right? Everybody looks at The Simpsons as like a this prophetic cartoon that everybody's always looking to understand what might be happening in the future. Because so many very specific things have happened in The Simpsons that people look back like, this just happened today. <laughs> the Simpsons talked about it three years ago. Mm -hmm. And very specific things. Even just yes, or this morning I watched a video of like some Asian leader was eating fish out of the, I forget what, the it was like a Japanese lake or river or whatever that was polluted at one point due to a nuclear meltdown. Mm -hmm. And they had cleaned up all the water. And they were trying to demonstrate was him and all his staff were eating fish out of this water to basically show everybody how safe it was. And like, will we really know for another four or five years? I don't know. But then it goes back to like in the Simpsons, how 
Burns was eating a three-eyed fish out of this radioactive lake. To, you know, and it was all the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, I look at some of this stuff as, as prophetic in a lot of ways. And I think Altered Carbon, not only is it just a really, really good sci-fi show, but it, it it's, it's entertaining as hell. I mean, it's just so good. Like the action in it, everything about it, it was filmed so well. It's just, it's really, really good. I can't, like if you haven't seen it, I can't remember how many seasons there are. I think there's two or three. Um, and uh, if you haven't seen it and you like sci-fi and you're into like all the future gobbledygook of what might be happening, personally, I want to live forever. Some people don't. I would totally be fine with that. If you, if you let me put everything in a little disc and I can pull it out retire the old sleeve, get into a new one. Maybe that's way hotter. That'd be good. <laughs> okay. Number four on the list. I feel like all of mine are in the same realm, pretty much because I like to watch happy things before I fall asleep. Yes. Happy things. It really, um, you haven't even said what it is yet. No, it's nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> nailed it, girl. I just think it's so cute and cheesy and dorky, which are all things that I love. And somehow, ironically, through the catastrophe of the bakers on the show, I have learned how to bake better. (laughs) Because I would try to make a cake or these out of the recipe book that I bought, and they were epic failures. Then I started watching Nailed It, and what did I do? I made two pies pies, that were amazing from scratch, and the reason is because I learned from people's mistakes. How not to make a pie on Nailed It. Yes, and mistakes I had made previously from trying to bake, following the directions step by step in the book. Didn't matter. Epic failure. I watched Nailed It. And I made two amazing pies. You really did make two amazing pies. Yes. Those were so stupid good. Yeah. That I'm like, you can't ever make this again because, I, I mean, even. I though, thought the same thing. Yeah. Because I ate a it's gigantic like piece and then three hours later, I'm like, one more little piece. <laughs> 45 minutes later, mm, like three more bites. What were they? Blackberry and cherry? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those were just. And it's like, honestly, even if there was nothing in it, the, the crust you made alone was the, so good. Because I used like coconut oil. That was Instead so of amazing. vegetable oil, I used. And I'm, I agree. Even when I was doing it, I was like, it's going to be better than the recipe. Well, <laughs> and this show is actually. So both Chris and, and our daughter love this show. They watch it together all the time. And it is a really cute show. I've watched a couple episodes with them. And basically, it's like a contest. Like, who... They, they, they bring these people on who, like, have what apparently is limited baking experience. And they give them these insane challenges. Like, oh, have you baked a cookie before? Cool. We want you to build a tower cake with 14 layers with, like human being sculptures on it. Right. And then, and then then they they have two hours. (laughs) You got like two (laughs) hours. So, and then they just basically show you how funny all of these dismal failures are. And then the one that's the closest to what they were set out to do wins. Yeah. And it's actually a really cute show. I will say it's very cute. And apparently Mm -hmm. it teaches you how to make a pie so that you can eat a pie. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Next on the list is, the expanse um this show i have to admit even though this is one of my favorite shows ever i never finished it oh because you don't want it to be over Uh, i have a really hard time i have a problem with things ending yeah i don't think that they're making more i think it was the last one and i'm kind of saving it for like a rainy day I got I got half an episode into the final season, and I'm like, I don't think they're ever making another one. And it's not as good as the first two. You know what I forgot about? Amazon bought it after the second series. I totally forgot. Queer Eye. Oh, see? This, <laughs> that's another one. No, I feel like I need to replace Below Deck with Lucifer. Oh, I okay. was, yeah, yeah, because that was pretty good. I just, I get... was on the spot. I was getting my nails done. Well, we'll I was to trying it. to throw we'll it replace out. It. I was actually shocked that Queer Eye was not on this. That's list. also, I know, because I, I can't watch Queer Eye for a straight guy. Do they even call it for a straight guy anymore? Is it just Queer? It's Eye? just Queer Eye. I could actually probably replace one of those i cannot anyone. watch that show without crying at the end and yeah. i don't care what it's about i really can't that, that show just 
Anyway, we're not talking about that right Sorry. now. We're talking about the expanse. I know, but when you were talking about it, something. See, now you want to change me. all of your picks. <laughs> anyway, before I am rudely interrupted with another transition into something else, uh, the expanse <laughs> is a as true to form science fiction series as you can get. Use they use real science. They use like the way they utilize like gravity, like the laws of gravity and and just just if you lived in space and you know they have I think there's like three or four factions like you have the Earth and Mars and then the Belters and you know the Belters are basically like the blue collar they're out there working on mining asteroids and things and then you've got like the Earth colonies and then you've got the Mars colonies and they're always kind of at war with each other and I would, I would really classify this show as like Game of Thrones in space. It's probably the easiest way of, of explaining it. And I mean, just like the way, like if you're, if you're a belter and you get arrested and they're trying to interrogate you, they don't have to touch you. They just bring you to a place with gravity and just chain you up against the wall and let gravity do its business. Because, you're, because when you're a belter, when you live in like these zero G, zero gravity um, colonies, you're, there, you're, you grow up all this time. What are you laughing at me I for? I just love how I went to it. You <laughs> get. Whatever. I, I mean, it's, it's trust the science. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Trust the science. Um, and yeah, it's, I see, I don't, she's laughing at me because I'm, I'm not so, laughing I'm, at listen, you. I'm nerding I out. I love it for you. It's the same that you do with your games. And I, I, I nerd it. out a little bit, but, but basically like it, because there's no gravity and they're not used to it, their entire, everything just falls to the floor. It just like sinks. And mm-hmm. over time it gets worse and worse and excruciatingly painful. And then they'll tell you anything. Just put me back in zero G. I'll tell you whatever you want. Um, but yeah, sounds awful. Uh, well, it, I mean, it was like, that's just one. I mean, element. that torturous aspect seems awful. <laughs> yeah. That was like one, one scene in particular, but it's the way they use the science behind all of this stuff in creative little ways that would, I'm sure be used if we had all of this mm-hmm. and yeah. Is that my seat? Yeah. I'm like, actually this happened in the third quarter of 82 BC. And like, I don't get that. Deep I into know, it. But, but I, I like your passion about it. It's I, cute. I, I can wrap my head around some nerd shit. Um, the real housewives. We'll keep this one. Cause I do like this one. And I, <laughs> and I, I like them all. It honestly doesn't matter. I like them all. Sometimes there's a season that is a little bit boring or not as exciting. What, there's not enough hair pulling. <laughs> No, I've been watching it for so long that I feel at this point, I like to watch the evolution of the people on the show. I find they it very, evolve. They do. Oh. I, I have actually very much disliked certain people on the show. And after like three, four years, they either they have evolved or the editing shows you different sides of them. So where you once were super annoyed by them every time they they came on the screen you were like oh this person you get to a point where you kind of like them have compassion for them have a better understanding of why they are the way that they are and then you you know even your feelings change i mean i kind of understand why they are the way they are already i mean you just you have these middle aged entitled wealthy women whose husbands are off making money while they're arguing about their that's not all of them their louis purses Mm-mm, i think that's how my it, purse is better no, no bitch how dare you so i do believe that that's how it started the premise of the show uh-huh. but it, it it's evolved that most of the women now they make the money yeah like they're the breadwinners for the most part a lot of because a lot they of have them. the show helping them launch new businesses <laughs> There's a lot of different reasons, but the show is definitely. I know I sound like a total hater. I just, I have, I don't know. There's something about this show that's always rubbed me wrong. And I get it because I, we understand reality and how a lot of it's garbage. Like it's made up. It's just like the way it's edited, things can very well be staged and like there's just so much to True, it. True, but there's also people that come on the show and think certain things aren't going to A, B, aired, found out. They get tra- just crazy things and you think like, how would you not mm-hmm. think about that? Anyway, it's a guilty pleasure. It is a guilty pleasure. It's a pleasure. total guilty pleasure. There's nothing 
other than listen you're not <laughs> alone regardless of what i think you and half the women in this country are obviously glued to these housewife shows or there wouldn't be one yeah, in it's every a county pleasure. in the country there's some i like more there's some i find way more what's your favorite one what's your favorite city <sighs> It depends on the season. Housewives of Appalachia. That's a good one. I would love to see that. There was a there was a while where I really liked I don't know, it changes all the time. I really liked um New York and Atlanta. New Jersey sometimes is like my least favorite. That was the one with all the mob wives and stuff, wasn't it? No. And they went I don't to think jail and all that. Yeah. Sometimes but then but then every once in a while Jersey has a season where it, it's super good. Orange County and Beverly Hills. Mm, I don't know. I know those are those are probably low on my totem pole. I like Atlanta. I like Potomac ish. Oh, that there's some people on there that have an interesting story, but I find them boring. I like. I don't know. New York and Atlanta. I guess are my favorite. Whatever. Whatever. I'm having a hard time wrapping my my head around um, the new New York season. Shh. I just think that's because everyone's new, and I I don't really know them yet. Yay. Whatever. Totally know your favorite city now. Oh, Salt Lake City. I forgot. Oh, Miami. I like Miami. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> now, this show, this show is the only show. Oh, I like this one, too, with you. Yeah. You watched it? Yeah. I don't remember watching it with Cardano's trying to get in. Oh, great. We're going to have another guest here shortly. No, I watched that one with you, at least. This show got me into politics shows. So Designated Survivor, it's basically about like half our government gets taken out by an, a, like kind of a terrorist explosion, a, si- a system of attacks and things. And um, so the, like the president, vice president, the attorney, everybody all the way down the line in our government was basically taken out in this explosion. And so Kiefer Sutherland plays like the HUD, HUD department's head. And he's like the, the, the next in succession to be the president. And so he's just kind of this like humble ho-hum kind of guy who ends up thrust into this position of, of presidential power. And he has integrity and he has compassion and he has, he doesn't have like a political bone in his body. Really. He's just like, I just want to do what's right for the country, which we really don't see often anywhere. Um, And so the show, you get so wrapped up in it because you're like, this is what a presidency should look like. This is what, you know, this is how things should be done or should, these are the kind of decisions that should be made and they're not. And it's almost like, you know, if you're, if you're asleep and you're having this amazing dream and then you wake up and you realize, no, the world still sucks. (laughs) It's kind of like, that's kind of what designated survivor did to me. Um, you know, and it's such a good show, and it's like really entertaining. Um, my my celebrity crush is in this show, Maggie Q. Reach out, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, I just I don't know. I love the show, and uh, watching this show got me into watching House of Cards, um, which you know everybody has their opinion on Kevin Spacey, and that's fine. But I love the show. I just absolutely love that show. Uh, it would be on this list, but this one to me is way better. House of Cards is much darker and seedier. This is much more kind of like light. It's lighter. Even though it's not, it's lighter. Um, and now I'm watching Madam Secretary with Taya Leone. And I'm like, and that's a really good show. And I'm, I haven't am i watched West Wing yet. I've, I've tried back, but it's like so old. It's hard for me to watch something that's so outdated. Mm-hmm. Um, but I probably will end up watching it when there's nothing else. But Designated Survivor to me is like just an awesome series. I wish it never ended. Mm -hmm. This is my only non-reality TV show. I know. I'm (laughs) shocked. Well, the only reason I put it on, I really did love it, is because I was obsessed with it when I was pregnant with Celine. And I binge watched it. What is it? What's it's all about terror. It's 24, people. It's 24 <laughs> it's all with about Kiefer Sutherland. kind of like terrorist attacks and how they have to figure out within 24 hours. Each episode is a 24-hour time period. No, it's the whole season. The whole season is 24 hours? I believe so. So there's 24 episodes in a season and each episode is one hour? <sighs> Why am I forgetting this? I thought each I thought the whole season was twenty four hours. I thought each episode was each episode is like the the 
is like an hour ish of time. Oh, okay. So I had it backwards. So there, then there must be 24 episodes per season. Maybe. I wonder if it says right here. I don't, I don't know. know. It's so, I, I. It's nine seasons, 192 episodes. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. And so I feel like because of that, so much is happening, like nail biting scenarios within a, a one hour period for each show. So it's like it's packed full of things. And what I love about it is as good as I am at guessing, like the second a show starts, I typically a show or a movie can guess the ending very, very, very quickly. Not with 24. Not with 24. And Always that's what guessing. I, yes, it's used like, to say that all the time. that's what I loved about it. Cause I was so used to being able to predict everything. And that show, you just never knew. And I'm pretty sure he did 24 before designated survivor. Cause he's a little oh, oh yeah. He definitely did 24. Yeah. So that's why I loved that show so much because it really kept me guessing and I loved it. Yeah, it was a good show. I I watch, I, I think I watched like three seasons of it because mm-hmm. you were you were so hooked on. Oh, it. I was you so that, hooked. You would binge watch like four or five episodes in a yeah, day. Yeah, when you were, you were a loan officer working at residential. Yeah, yeah, I was very. Um, <laughs> what am I trying to say? I had really bad, um, not just morning sickness, but pregnancy sickness. I was so sick. You loved being pregnant, though. I did love being pregnant. All right. So this is this series I've watched twice all the way through, and it reminds me so much <clears throat> of when I went to Lawrenceburg High School in Indiana. This show, and I'm sure it's like every small town high school in America, I'm guessing. Probably not in California, but like anywhere else in the world, uh, Friday Night Lights. I mean, this this show and the way the football team was like they were like legends in their own time everybody was like all about the football team it gave like it it gave the town an identity and 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 it was very much how i always felt things were in in lawrenceburg where i went to high school and um it's and it's a matter of fact the i'm pretty sure yeah peter berg um he's the guy who just he did the show uh, painkillers with Matthew Broderick about oxycodone or whatever mm-hmm. oxycontin and um, I had no idea this guy was I, I I didn't even know he was the guy who did Friday Night Lights until we were started getting into the painkillers and I heard mm-hmm. on Joe Rogan about painkillers and I was like oh that's the guy that did Friday Night Lights oh my gosh and he's done all kinds of stuff he's he's uh, very bad things the rundown Friday Night Lights the kingdom. I didn't even know this. Oh, okay, oh wow. That, yeah. I mean, he's he's like this guy is Hancock. I didn't even know that. Oh wow. Lone survivor battle. Sh- I mean, this guy is a a, a G. I, like I had no idea. That's crazy. I had no idea either. And the list just goes on and on and on. I mean, he's done so much stuff, and I had no idea because I remembered him as an actor. Yeah. Right. Like he's he's fifty nine years old, uh, out of New York. Um, so yeah, I had no idea he did all these movies, like great movies, and they do all kind of have a similar kind of spirit to them somehow, which makes a lot of sense. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, Friday Night Lights, man, that, that show is so good. So this, you, your gut said, Below well, Deck. it's only because it's, it's like on my list now, but I don't actually love Below Deck. Below, I don't think below, it's that wonderful. It, below, below Deck is average at best it is average at best so what did you want to replace this with there's you, you had i only two. i only have one more yeah this is it this is the top 10 wait i did watch what happens live nailed it housewives 20 you're right i'm always right sometimes oh god it is a it's either between queer eye and, and lucifer and, and lucifer i know it's a tie I, I, if I, I personally had to pick, I and, and some, some people are going to be like, Crow likes Queer Eye. I really do like that show. I really like the show because I love the message. The one dude who's just as flamboyant as all get out is so hilarious to me. Oh, Jonathan. no fucks given. And I he love is Jonathan. just like, he's, this is me. Love it or leave it. I he's give my no favorite. Shit. I follow him on TikTok. And I I'm, love people like that. I'm obsessed with his. I love people like that who are genuine and very just 
lots of love to give. I don't like people that are like that, but they're like catty and nasty. No, There's he's awesome. Difference. I he's feel like, cool. and I feel like when he does political stuff, I feel like he tries to educate in such a way that it's not, it's, it's such a way that tries to get you to understand different people's perspectives and how they might have been raised or feel. And he does it in a way that's very informative and real. And I feel like if you ever want change or you're trying to get someone to maybe think how you think Be the or, change you want to see. Basically. Yeah. And yeah. he, he's re- I like the way he goes about everything. Um, so yeah, I love Jonathan, and he's yeah. so over That's the- who it is, Jonathan? Yeah. yeah. He's, I, he's pretty funny. Yeah. So I, I could definitely see you having a friend like that. Yeah, he, he's so- Always with me. <laughs> he's over the top, but I love it. I, he, I just, honestly, I think he's just the cutest. Yeah. And yeah. I, the show is always, like everybody already knows, like anybody that's watching this from my other channel knows I can get emotional. And I am a pretty emotional dude. I, I, I can be the, like the rough and tumble tough guy if necessary, but generally I'm just a big pussy cat. And I, and, and, and I do, I am very compassionate and like, it's so hard. Like I get really hyper emotional with, uh, singing, mm. like a, just an angelic, a beautiful talent of any kind. Like I, I think I get fused up to greatness mm-hmm. and, and I get fused to, just anything that I feel is genuine. Cause like in today's world where everybody just runs around with a mask of shit on their face all the time, trying to protect themselves. It's like anytime there's anything real or genuine, I I'm somehow touched by it. And that show comes off to me as, is, you know, just a group of guys who I don't know, man, there's just something about it. It gets me every freaking time and mm-hmm. watching them kind of transform someone you know, and, and giving them confidence, giving them hope, giving them something new mm-hmm. to like live and experience. And just, I, it, there's something. No, it's amazing. It. Of I course. love the show. Yeah. I, I admit I do crow the seven foot MMA mm-hmm. guy loves queer eye. Okay. I want to put it on the record. I don't care. But Lucifer on the other hand, it's a I, totally different ball. Game. It's a totally different ball game, but I, you just like the show. Cause you think the guy's hot. I mean, there's that. <laughs> but I also like. Who just happens to look exactly like me. <laughs> you guys have your similarities. Kidding, kidding. Um, I just think I like, you know, it's that typical, he's that typical bad boy who's like, but fiercely in love and would do anything for his love. And she's scared and he's always trying to protect her and she's always trying to. It sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> but then she's always trying to protect herself and her child. And where have I heard all this before? You're so funny. <laughs> it's all, it's all, somebody must have spied on the first five years of our relationship and made a show out of it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There are some similarities, some things that remind me of us, but just a few. But I do love that show. Uh, it is actually a good show. But I admit, she was watching that show religiously. And I'm like, what is this show? And you're like, it's so good. I love it. And I watched the first couple episodes. I'm like, this is the jankiest, <laughs> hokiest, silliest shit I've ever seen. And she's like, you got to keep watching it. You'll get hooked. And, and ultimately, I did. I got pretty hooked on it. Yeah. And um, it, because once you get past like the hokiness of it mm-hmm. and you just kind of you, you get into the story and you get it's almost like a soap opera. Yeah. But like a, an acted well done soap opera. Right. Plus, there's always like a crime that you have to figure out, which that is pretty easy. That's yeah, they there's don't not much to figure. There's out. not much to figure out. I like May. Isn't she like the little dominatrix badass assassin or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Maze. Maze. That's it. Yeah. Maze is cool. Yeah. I'm down for maze. Mm -hmm. So that, folks, ultimately concludes our top 10 list of television series that we know and love. And hopefully you will, too. And I guess that's I guess that's all there is to say until next time, guys. Make sure you subscribe if you have any interest at all in any of our future outings or conversations and hit the like button. Don't cancel us. I love Raymond Noodles. Jason. (laughs) I do.